Good evening, race fans. Welcome to BFP Night in North America here at the beautiful Myrtle Beach Speedway. We are live, a beautiful field of race cars here tonight. Glad to have everybody joined in. We are with heat race number one at the moment. And things are kicking off fast and furious already. Heat race number one underway, two laps in. We've got a couple of cars spinning. King in the 42 has gone around. We will stay green. Charlie Stanborn, the man on top in position number one. Ryan Battle in the second spot. King, Dunn, Tapley, and Matthew Bonat in the top six. Scoring updating now. Dunn, Campbell, Johnson, and King all up front at the moment. Tyler Connolly in the 51 is currently the first driver on the outside. 15 laps will be the distance here tonight. We will run three heat races. Glad to have everybody tuned in. This is qualifying for the Rex on the Beach 100, all part of BFB Night in North America. Sanborn out to the early lead, looking for a little bit of luck here this season. Hasn't had quite the season with BFP night in America that he would like to have, but tonight could be a big night here in Myrtle Beach. Closing up on the halfway point of this one, six laps complete, nine laps to go. It's all Charlie Sanborn, car number 69, the Black Flag Podcast, Pontiac, working his way through turns three and four. And in the mirror comes Ryan Battle, the Star Speedway Super Modified regular, part of the Battle Racing family. They had a pretty up and down weekend at Star Speedway this past weekend as part of the Bunny Brawl. And Star Speedway, of course, presenting tonight's action. So glad to have everybody on board. We got a battle for the top spot. Now Battle in the top spot for the moment. He'll look to the inside, Sanborn. Is he gonna fight the position? Not sure if he's going to. He will continue to roll the outside. Past the halfway point of this one. Battle gonna clear him off turn number two. Ryan Battle to the front of the field. The youngster going back at it. Sandborn with the dive to the inside. The Black Flag Podcast Pontiac not giving up on the bottom crew. They'll run door handle to door handle. Sandborn and Battle, one and two. Dunn, Campbell, Johnson, and King, your top six at the moment. Connolly, the odd man out, looking to make his way into the big show. He's about, about three quarters of a second back from position at number six. Four and a half laps to go. They'll head down the back stretch one final time. Battle in the 22 car. Starting to pull out a bit of an advantage. Two car lengths. The distance between himself and the Southern Maine driver, the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway regular West Cassett. Oxford also on Sam Ford's schedule for this season. Transmit, or transferring into a car owner role for the season. But tonight, looking to make the big dance in position number two. Three laps left to go. Done now. Starting to close in as well, it looks like. Not too far behind. Battle continues to tighten up. Six in the air, two to go for Ryan Battle. Battle running about half a lane up from the bottom groove of the racetrack. Sanborn has not let him get away. It's another car length maybe added between the two of them. This time by off turn number four. White flag in the air, one lap to go. Ryan Battle looking to win heat race number one and a qualify for the big show. We've already taken 10 through time trials. Petition number 11 up for grabs. Off turn number four, checkered flag in the air, Ryan Battle gonna grab the victory. Oh, we had a we had a crash at the line. Sanborn gonna make the big show. Charlie Sanborn 
qualifying into the big show for the first time this season. He'll make his way down the front stretch. Let's hear for the Scarborough main driver. Let's hear for Charlie Sanborn. What a show we've seen here tonight. Heat race number one already providing action. Folks at the pit stop checking things out. The fans are on their feet here at the Myrtle Beach Speedway in a beautiful South Carolina. Heat race number two ready to roll out in just a few moments time. Want to thank our presenting sponsor here tonight. The folks in Epping, New Hampshire, Star Speedway back on board. And this Saturday, it will be the Cars and Stars of the Granite State Pro Stock Series making their return to Epping, New Hampshire for the Hedges Excavating 100. This event is also going to feature the Bob Weber Senior Memorial for the 350 Super Modifieds, which will be racing for nearly $4,000. It'll be a 47 lap main event for the 350 supers the two to go show six shooters k cop slingshots and the cruiser division the night owl creations cruisers will be on the show as well action kicks off 5 p.m eastern on saturday may 6th so glad to have the folks from star speedway on board once again can't do it without them very much appreciate those folks helping make racing possible here at virtual Myrtle Beach Speedway. Heat race number two rolls out onto the racetrack. And if you thought that was exciting enough, you ain't seen nothing yet. This is going to get wild here in heat race number two. Gonna get a field rundown here in just a few moments. Timing and scoring updates, but it is a full field once again trying to qualify here tonight. We love seeing that here as part of BFP Night in North America. You know, while all that's going on, I'm about half a lap away from the green, we'll give you the drivers that have qualified so far for the big event Ryan Kuhn, Casey Biotti, John Peters, Ryan Borges, Brandon Ruzick, Brent Roy, Jason Ricker. Threlfall, I don't have a first name on him. I apologize for that one. Uh, Roachfort and Adam Jocelyn, along with our very own Charlie Sam. Off turn number four this time, green flag in the air. We are racing here at the Myrtle Beach Speedway. Heat race number two underway. Jake Grout in the 49. He has been a strong campaigner this season, along with TJ Moon. Good to see John Gahan in the field as well. And Leaf making his first BFP night in North America start this season. I may be corrected on that one, but uh, good to see the Gahan family. They have a long history of late model competition in that family. Side-by-side -side battle, they trade some paint. Grout and Moon wasting no time with one another, both getting a little squirrely, they save it. Grout trying to work the bottom groove of the racetrack. It'll be a three quarters of a car length lead for Grout, he will clear into turn number one. Here comes TJ Moon to the inside. Moon right back to the back bumper. Drivers running single file all around the Myrtle Beach Speedway. It is getting exciting. Heat race number two for the Rex on the Beach 100. And while we've got all that going on, we've got heat race number one winner himself, Charlie Sandborn. Charlie, your luck has turned around, my friend. Wow, what a show you put on there tonight. Yeah, 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 we finally, what, took us seven tries. Uh, we're finally in the show, pal. How goes it? We are having a great time up here. We're loving what we're seeing out on the racetrack. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you know, from the top of the Sanborn Racing Enterprises hauler, the action is getting fierce for these qualified positions. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, to be fair, the, the beginning of this race here, uh, uh, I had never even seen this racetrack. I had no idea what it even looked like, and... Uh, 
Uh, you know, put on a good show there with Ryan Battle. He raced me clean, and uh, glad to just put on a show for the fans here. As uh, looks as though heat race number two is a lot of side-by-side -side action here for the transfer spot. Absolutely, a couple of cars getting slideways a little bit further back. The top five have broken away, so they are trading positions, swapping a little bit of paint, but keeping it clean, keeping it honest. We love seeing that here on BFB Night in North America. You know, sometimes you get the chaos, like we saw at the Guardrail Memorial 100 or last week's parking lot party 150. But, uh, you know, we love seeing it just past the halfway point of this one. Uh, Charlie, what can we expect from the 69 car from the feature event a little bit later on? Uh, don't get your hopes up. I'm, I've, I'm notoriously pretty bad at this. Uh, uh, we, we got lucky there in the heat race. Uh, things kind of fell our way that the, uh, maybe, maybe we wanted to. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy we're in the show for once. Uh, so going to start off uh, probably end of, the, end of the pack here. I think I might get an EOL for... Uh, mouthing off to the race director but uh that's all right it's uh bfp night in north america and uh we, we got the bfp car in the show and that's all i was looking to do here glad to have you on board glad to have you as part of this it's going to be a big show later on we'll catch up with you uh in a little bit there mr sandborn we've got Four and a half laps left to go in heat race number two. Grout continues to lead over TJ Moon. Gahan in the third spot. Thomas and O'Neill in position number five. Trevor Krauss in position number six. He is qualifying now for the main show. Uh, glad to see that. Trevor Krauss has been doing some great real world racing this season, has run a couple of times. So uh, we'll see if driver number 19 is going to make the Rex on the Beach 100. If you just tuned in on our Facebook page, a couple laps left to go in heat race number two. And we've also got uh, another regular to the PFP stables, somebody we all like having around, uh, Davey Rando. Uh, Davey, glad to have you here in the booth at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Oh, thank you guys. Sad I couldn't be uh, behind the wheel tonight, but join you guys up in the broadcast booth here. You know, it's going to be a big night here tonight. It's uh, These drivers are going to have a lot of work cut out for them in the last couple laps. Um, you know, you look at these top six or so, they've distanced themselves from the rest of the field. Uh, how much do you really push yourself? And as I say that, Gahan ends up in the wall. So I guess point taken back, they, you know, sometimes you put a little bit of the patience out there and you, you kind of run out of it in the late going. Well done. So it looks like we uh, we, we saw the last lap there, Davey. Everything kind of came to a head there. Uh, yeah, talk a little bit about patience here for a moment. These drivers are antsy to make the big show. Yeah, and when you're sitting inside those transfer spots, I mean, that's when it really comes to play, whether or not you want to try and pick your position for that you know, for the main event to stay out of the Conti, but you also got to be smart so that you don't end up back in there when you're already safe. So it's going to be a battle of patience in this next heat race for sure. Absolutely. Heat race number three about to roll out onto the racetrack. We do want to send a special uh, congratulations now out to uh, Jake Grout winning heat race number two. Grout with a stellar run trying to hold off TJ Moon. He'll do so. And provisionally... Uh, I believe if this EOL penalty does come into play for Charlie Sanborn, he could end up position number 11, which is not too terrible. Yeah, that'd be a real good start for him. You know, you know with him having his own league, he, he wants to be in the fight. And so I'm definitely glad to see his hard charge there in the beginning of his heat, all the way from ninth to first. So, you know, he's definitely got some, uh, some, some talent he's trying to show off here tonight. Absolutely. Uh, glad to have everybody tuned in on our Facebook page. Uh, glad to have everybody know they can't hear me in the server. We've got a full field of race cars here. Uh, yeah, you know, Thomas Goley, Dave Goley, they're tuned in. Uh, Brian PG2 is tuned in. Ashley King, uh, she's cheered on Charlie Sanborn. TJ Moon, he says it's been good racing so far. Just saw him uh, racing. Uh, driver number 49, Trevor, or uh, Jake Grout, rather. So glad to see that. We're, we're about to send them off for heat race number three. Yeah, we'll keep our eyes here on some of the uh, PCRL regulars, too. Stephen Piero, Daniel Kane, those are guys that I've run against.
points and they're they're pretty quick so we'll see what they can do they make their way to the start box off turn before green flag in the air heat race number three is underway But a three wide action further back. Top two try to drive themselves away. Everybody gets a little squirrely in behind. That will allow your top two to drive away. There goes Piero up to the third spot there. Making some moves. Piero having a great run here tonight. On over in car number 97 with a solid run. But he's got Wilson breathing down his neck. Driver's a little bit sideways. A little further back in car number 27, that's uh, Gardner in the 27 car, the City Chevrolet colors. And it looks like it's going to be a close battle for that six transfer spot, so we'll see uh, who can get it gathered up. And that, I think that's where the race is going to be as, as the leaders continue to check out. We got problems with Brian Conover, moves to the outside, that gives the lead to Wally, Wally Wilson here with just over 10 laps to go in the seat. The so Wilson takes the top spot. Conover, yeah, he moved up a little bit, but I guess it was uh, probably not of his doing. He he got a little bit sideways up the racetrack. Didn't like seeing that, but uh, he held on to it. And Conover holds on to the second spot now. The the third place driver, Piero, a uh, driver from PCRL, having a solid run so far. The battle is for fourth. Rick Thompson Jr. in the fourth spot, followed by Tel, uh, Ty, Ty Delphia is going to make a move down to the bottom in the 32 machine, take fourth spot away. And uh, a little bit closer action as the 70 car is still up the track. It's a little bit of contact there with uh, Sean Boudreau. Yeah, Boudreau trying to take the spot from the Oxford Plains regular. Uh, Thompson in car number 70. He, now holds on to the fifth spot. Those drivers have to be careful with one another because Gardner is on his way to the front. And we talked about patience in the last heat race. As the laps wind down, we come up towards the halfway point of this one. Now the patience really is put to the test because this is the last heat race. If you don't make it in the top six, you've got a real rough and tumble last chance qualifier to work your way through. And that qualifier don't leave any of those guys out they're going to be battling hard for it so we'll see what happens here with this last transfer spot Gardner's looking pretty strong and it looks like he wants to get around Sean pretty bad so just past the halfway point of heat race number three and the top six, as it's been all season long, walking their way in uh, unofficially at the moment to the big show. Everybody else has to go to the last chance qualifier event. And coming up now on five laps to go, Wally Wilson in car number 50, I believe. Wilson has been a driver we haven't heard a lot about. Granted, I did miss last week's race at Oxford, but you know we haven't heard a lot from from Wilson in the 50 car, but he is flexing his muscle here tonight over the 97 of Ryan Conover. He's showing some really good consistent speed up, up, up in front as the leaders start to check out. Uh, a little bit of a closing battle between third spot of uh, Stephen Piero and Ty Delphia as Delphia kind of makes his way up there trying to take the third spot away. We still have a close battle there with, uh, for the final transfer spot with Sean and uh, Gardner. Well, battles, you know, battles all over this racetrack, as you've mentioned. What I like seeing, though, with two and a half laps to go, drivers aren't using each other up, you know. They're kind of using the size of the racetrack. It's a big half mile, big, fast, flat oval. They're using that to their advantage and kind of taking their opportunities when they come to them. But they're not running over each other. Not, they're not using each other up. They know if they don't make the show, you know, it is what it is, and they can enjoy it from the beer garden. Yeah, and I, I think some of the new rules that uh, the race admin Scott didn't put in place with the EOL penalties, trying to keep these guys in check, because uh, in the beginning of the season, um, you know, it, it was a little bit of a rough start as we had uh, – mishap with Daniel Kane there. He got turned around. He's on the front stretch and just reset. 
Cup break for Kane. Check her flag in the air. Wilson gonna pick up heat race number three. Brian Conover, Stephen Piero, Ty Delphia, Rick Thompson Jr. and Boudreau in position number six. Gardner in the 27 car gonna have to go to the last chance qualifier. We'll have that up here in just a few moments. So great to have everybody here. Scott with one T Fowler. Uh, tuned in asking some very egregious questions in our chat but uh, you know we expect nothing less from from Mr. Fowler so we appreciate everybody tuning in the last chance race lining up here Davey we've seen some great racing so far now what do we have to look forward to for if anybody's first time tuning in what do they have to look forward to here in a few moments this next one coming up, I mean, it, it is going to be ed edge of your seat for these guys trying to make it into this final race. I mean, there is a lot of good competition of guys that are behind the seat, you know, a few, few times a month in, in the real cars and then uh, guys that are just really into the sim. So it's cool to see all them kind of clash together. You, you can race with some of New England's best, you know, or, or some that are all, all, all over the states here, really. So it's, it's going to be a pretty good show. Ace car ready to roll out in uh, just a few moments time. As you can see, uh, Myrtle Beach Speedway not running, running on uh, Southern time as it were. Things happening pretty quickly here, so we, we're glad to have that. And the stands are packed. These drivers, these fans, everybody tuned in at home want to see a show. Folks, you're gonna be in for quite a treat here in just a few moments time. Starting on the front row in uh, P1, we got Tyler Connolly outside pole. Eugene Hawk in that third spot. We got Joshua Gardner. We saw how how thirsty he was for that transfer, but he played it cool and, and, and was patient. He's going to try and get it done here in the uh, in the consolation. Outside of him, we have Jason Diorio. Yeah, drivers put some heat in the tires. Last chance qualifier. Uh, looks like this is, I believe our, our pal Tom will let me know how many laps this is. I believe it'll be 20, 25, somewhere around there. 25 laps for this uh, concert race here. 25, glad to, glad to have you in the booth keeping me honest here. Here we go, pace car is off. They head to the restart box green and green flag in the air as we see a full field of late model stocks. It's the BFPI late model stock car tour. Cars going three wide, a little bit further back into the wall. A couple of cars find the the uh, the old concrete wall in turn number one and two. We will continue on 25 laps the distance and one lap complete as Tyler Connolly is in the Catford seat. And it looks like Hawk in the second spot and Gardner in the 27 just saw him miss his way through the heat race. So he will be amped up and ready to try and qualify for one of the final positions in this show. Gardner not able to make the inside line work there on that start, so I, I think we're going to see him be patient and, and uh, make his move. It looks like he's trying to set up sec second place. Ooh, we have a uh, wreck there on the front stretch. A couple, couple of guys of turn around. Matt Matt Franson from PCRL, another uh, good 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 weekly driver. Unfortunately, he, his day is done. Under the light here at Myrtle Beach Speedway, a couple of drivers finding the bad end of Lady Luck in this last chance qualifier. Top two make the big dance. And right now, your top two is Connolly and Hawk. They lead the draft, as it were. Rack in behind them. Oh, a couple of cars hard Man, into the wall. Man, big contact with the 47 and the 23 car. I saw Matt, Matt Moy was in it. Tough break for Benat. It's not been his night. Connolly seeming to just drive. 
drive away, but he has pressure. Let's see if he can hang on to that top spot. The real driver under pressure seems to be Gardner. Uh, Saucier in that four car. Not our own Brad Saucier, but uh, I believe Roger Saucier in the Casey Kane Red Bull colors. Worked the bottom groove for a moment. The car slides up the racetrack. He'll shut the door on his nearest competitor in behind him. And it looks like Diorio in position number five, trying to he hold gets, on to the He spot. gets turned around. Diorio is around, three cars around. Some guys really just battling hard, trying to make make some make some positions as we're uh, just shy of the halfway mark. Coming up on 10 laps complete, we'll have 15 laps to go in this last chance race, the hooligans race, as it were. And these drivers so antsy to make their way up to the top two and make their way to the big dance that these incidents are only creating more gaps between themselves now in the top four and effectively, you know, for lack of a better term, term uh, screwing themselves out of making the wrecks on the beach 100. It looks like Gardner is trying to find any way around Eugene Hawk, and Hawk is not letting that happen, but at, we're starting to see uh, Connolly start to create a little gap between him and him in second place. If Connolly can continue to put a gap between himself and Hawk, then he's in a good position because he's probably not going to catch much lap traffic, if any, before the end of this show, but Hawk is going to have to drive a little bit worried now because Gardner is there and Gardner's already been one spot short of making the big show. He doesn't want to do it again. He wants to qualify in car number 27, but this could open the door for Saucier as well if that four car plays the patience game. And just have to capitalize on not making mistakes as we see Gardner go around into the wall and turn four. Him, him and Saucier had a little bit of contact. That's going to take him out of contention for tonight. Tough break there for the 27 group. You know how it is. You come from the sports car world. I'm sure Ryan Marine would talk about it. You know, the commentator's curse, as it were. As soon as you talk about how good a car is doing, they find their way into trouble. Not really of their doing. Um, unfortunately, that takes out uh, Gardner and really puts a damper on his efforts to make tonight's feature. Saucier now, maybe probably feeling a little bit dirty about that one, but Saucier's only goal now is, you know, it happened. Let's see if we can qualify for the show. They have to move on from it and just keep moving forward, and he only has one more spot to try and make it in tonight. So we'll see if, if Saucier can catch up to Hawk and put on a battle for the last transfer spot here. Really enjoying all the racing we're seeing here, not just tonight, but this season with BFP Night in North America, the I Late Model Stock Car Tour. We've had great turnouts of drivers. The sponsorships have been plentiful. They've, they've been very supportive of us. The fans have been tuning in all over the social media. We love seeing that. We love seeing great racing here with eight laps left to go. Saucier, oh, and wow, Hawk taking the extreme outside. That's gonna cost him a position. Will he try the crossover move on uh, Saucier in car number four? Not going to be able to get it done. Now the Red Bull car is locked into the show for the moment. You know, unofficially locked in. But he's still got seven laps to do this. He's got about four miles to try and hold off Eugene Hawk, who has been hungry here this evening. That I'm sure Hawk here right now is kicking himself for that mistake, maybe driving a little bit too much in the rear. Now he's just got to eyes forward, focus, and try and go get that four car. Myrtle Beach is an interesting speedway. You know, you've got the, uh, the long back stretch there, kind of sweeps into turn three, a little bit like a bigger South Boston. You've got the, the wide front stretch here, it really sweeps in. But turn two is a tricky spot because if you can get the angle into turn one, two, you kind of have to stab the brakes to get the back end to turn. And so far, these top three have made it work. Some a little bit more than others. And for somebody like Hawk, he's going to have to get up on the wheel. 
really looking to it's really looking similar to some of the racing that we saw at Thompson where it, with having you know that's that second groove you can kind of make the bottom work but it is really really hard to pass so it, it seems like these guys are kind of fall, falling in to a halfway groove and just trying just trying to keep people from getting by on the, on the outside I think is where passes are going to work this could be interesting, Davey. We could see a little bit of payback here. Uh, the 27 car is going to let him go for the moment. That yes, he will. From the camera angle, I was just watching. That almost looked like it was going to be a repeat of Joe Logano and Matt Kent at, at Martinsville. So we'll see if Gardner keeps his cool and just uh, just stays out there to run the race. But right now, he is closing fast on that board. One lap to go, and Gardner closing in now. You know, this would take him out of a transfer spot, but driver number 27 kind of has nothing to lose at this point. Half a lap left to go. And off turn number four, he'll move him up the racetrack, trying to pin him up against the car, against the wall. Nothing doing. Connolly makes the show. Saucier going to end up up into the wall. And good thing they'll have a backup car at the Red Bull headquarters because he will need it. Oh wow. my goodness. What a finish from these guys. I see him over at their hauler roll, rolling out the backup. So we'll see what Saucer can do here in the, uh, the feature race. Oh goodness. You know, uh, y you talk about what these drivers are willing to do to make the big show and you see it right there some of these guys will absolutely clobber one another and you know what good on both of them good on gardner for making it exciting good on saucier for holding on to the thing he could have spun and could have t-boned that car stuck up against the outside wall managed to hold on to it and now we have got our field locked in Just before we kick things off here tonight, the Rex on the Beach 100, all part of BFB Night in North America. Want to thank the fine folks once again from Star Speedway, home of the Flappy Birds. They'll be in action once again this Saturday, May 6th. The cars and stars of the Grand State Pro Stock Series make their return to the place in Effie, New Hampshire. The uh, place to race, the Hedges Excavating 100 on tap. Also, the 350 Super Modifieds will have a big event. It's the Bob Weber Senior Memorial with the, a uh, $3,700 to win purse currently at the moment. The two to go shows six shooters, K Cop slingshots, and Night Owl Creations cruisers will be in action as well. That's at 5 p.m. in Epping, New Hampshire. A uh, May 6th start at Star Speedway. And what an awesome event that is. I mean, Star Speedway does a really good job of promoting that race every year, and it's always such a good turnout, good race. So, I mean, it's definitely something. If you haven't been, you need to go to it. Definitely need to make the trip to Epping, New Hampshire. Ryan Kuhn, a three-time winner this season, works his way towards the rear of the field. This time by, folks, as they make their way across the front stretch, tuned in from home, wherever you are, let's give these drivers a wave off. Wave to your TVs, your phones, your monitors, whatever you got, your VR headsets, whatever you're watching us in. Tune in and grab your chips, grab your pop, your beer, your corn nuts, whatever you got. This is the Rex on the Beach 100 presented by the folks at Star Speedway, part of the BFP I Late Model Stock Car Tour. The lights on the pace car are out. We got John Peter starting on the front row in position number one. Brent Roy just to his outside in P2. Brandon Rusek, P3 in the 62 car. Jason Ricker, P4, rounding off out the top five. Uh, we have Jason Ricker. Uh, Jake Grout looks like he's on the outside as well in position at number six. Pace car pulls in. The Mustang pulls into the pit area. Lights are out. John Peterson, Brent Roy off turn number four. The Rex on the beach. 100 is underway. What a move there from the 22. It's 
there. Ryan, Ryan Battle goes from the outside all the way to the bottom, making it three wide there. He is putting some heavy pressure in, uh, on the five car of uh, Jake Grout. And Jake Grout turns him into the fence off of four. Battle hard, driver's door into the uh, turn four wall. Not sure if we'll see a caution on that one. It looks like everybody's going to keep on going. So devastating break for Ryan Battle as he ends up tail of the field with a tore up race car. Not what he wanted to see. Three laps into the Rex of the Beach 100. John Peters looking for his first win of the season. Brent Roy, he wants to turn his win around or turn his season around rather. We talked about this uh, a little bit in the real world. Brent Roy has had some stellar track position when he needs it. The luck just has not fallen his way. And car number 26 could be one to watch here tonight. Uh, Brandon Ruzik, another driver who wants some luck here this season in car number 62. Still has some two wide action there for uh about the six spot as they start to file in in the Ryan battle just takes out the five car in re retaliation that's got that's got to be a caution Ye yellow flag is out caution number one comes out on the racetrack a couple of cars getting together in the aftermath so five laps in the Rex on the beach 100 finds its first caution of the evening a 30 car field, 30 late model stock competitors. I won't say they're the best of the best in North America, but you know, these guys, gals, whoever's in the field, they know how to put on a show and we're seeing it here tonight. Oh, and Battle and Grout get turned. Yeah, that was, uh, that was capital I intentional, capital R retaliation. And with, with that, Ryan Battle's been asked to go to the uh, IBFP hauler there to have a chat with uh, Scott. Scott did it. I'm sure he, he was not happy with that retaliation. We saw some really good green flag race in there for the first five laps. Both drivers, it sounds like, receiving end of the longest line penalties. And, you know, you've run a couple of these races. Um, would you want to be in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, with Scott Dinnan after something like that? After knowing him personally, not not really with the amount of hockey he's been watching lately, I, I wouldn't want to get caught up with him th throwing the gloves down. Yeah, fair treatment, uh, you know, up north, we call it a no-fault caution. I mean, both drivers at fault. The name's kind of uh, kind of a little bit of a misnomer, but drivers involved in the caution going to find themselves at the rear, and the rest of the field will continue on and continue to put on some solid racing. It looks so, like we'll have about two more laps to go under caution until we can start get racing again. We'll talk a little bit more about your race leader, John Peters. He's running really st uh, strong. Got the kind of check out a little bit from Brent Roy, but I mean, they're all just staying pre pretty close to each other uh, in time. So it's just going to be who, who can save. You got 100 laps, you get a set of tires. What are you going to do with them? And when, when are you going to pit? Myrtle Beach is famously rough on tires. Some of that beach sand working its way naturally onto the racetrack, making the track a little bit gritty, a little bit slick. Uh, so the surface tonight probably working against these drivers a little bit. But as we talked about, you know, we are counting caution laps, so that'll take a little bit of the stress off. But we still have 90 laps left to go in the wrecks on the beach 100 lights on the on the pace car are out we are going green this time by john peters leads brent roy we'll see what happens here going into turn one if they can keep it clean peters on the outside roy electing the inside wrecker in behind them as well keep an eye on the front two rows green flag in the air peters with the whole shot he gets on the hammer and green flag back in the air here at myrtle beach 
Now Peters will try to pull away as he heads down the backstretch. How much distance can he put between himself and his close compadre, Brent Roy, in car number 26? Wally Wilson having a good start in P5. He's going to be making a move here to go to the fourth spot under uh, Jordan Thurfall. Wilson we saw with a solid run in the heat race, really surprising run and really appreciated having him come out to try his luck at the Rex in the Beach 100, picked up the heat win and already up into the top five, talking about a driver a little further back, Mr. Sanborn himself, Charlie Sanborn, works his way up a couple of positions. He's got Saucier in behind him, Borges there as well. And Casey Biotti, a winner this season in I Late Model Stock Car Tour competition. Biding his time, keep an eye on car number 45. We'll check in with the 13 car, Ryan Kuhn. He's just sitting outside the top 10. He's he, he's looking to get up front and go play. The Emirates Auto Parts, Bernier's Liquors, Arcane Speed Shop number 72, the Massachusetts driver. Trying to do the Bay State proud and put car number 72 up towards the front. A three-time winner this season. And almost had a fourth win a couple of weeks ago. But uh, Ryan Borges stealing away a win at the parking lot party 150 in Oxford Plain Speedway. So Kuhn in the 72. He'll have some traffic. Uh, I guess you can't really call it traffic, but for someone as fast as Ryan Kuhn, he would probably consider it traffic. Car spinning in behind him. Caution flag comes out. And Caution is out. I'm trying to see Sean Pedro turned around there as he gets himself straightened out. We'll have a little bit of a replay here, thanks to Fence Line Films and Tom the Modified Guy. Woodrow cleared him, cleared off the nose, but uh, man, tough break with the, the 32 car. We'll have a bit of a aerial view here. Yeah, they give each other some room. So the, thir uh, the 32 wanted to wanted to get down, and he he saw a hole, just a little bit of misjudgment, and that uh, unfortunately. Yeah, good point. Tom just brought up respect. That is the name of the game here tonight with Rex and the Beach 100. Uh, Twenty percent of the way or so through this one, still a long ways left to go. Over three quarters of the race remaining. And uh, drivers now work their way under caution. And a couple of cars getting together a little bit. Yeah, so we do have a, a bit of a new rule here with BFP Night North America. We have two EOLs that the drivers can find themselves in possession of. So if a driver does receive one, they go to the back. If they do something stupid, receive another one, that's it. That's the end of your night. You can find yourself in the hot dog line with the rest of the race fans. You don't get to play with the rest of the kids on the schoolyard. So under caution for the second time in this event, uh, John Peters in car number 09 has a podium run from Southern National earlier in the season. Tonight, he would like to crack victory lane. He's got his friend, uh, the 26 of Brent Roy, the 9 of Jason Ricker there as well. Ricker would like to park his car in victory lane. Wally Wilson is going to be one to watch in car number 50. He could be a dark horse here tonight. He's having a really strong run, just sitting up there in the top five. I'm sure he's going to be trying to make some moves, trying to get to the front as quick as he can. Roachport, O'Neill, Gahan, Campbell, King, and TJ Moon with a good run in position at number 10. Right now, Moon's going to have a mirror full of Ryan Kuhn. Kuhn and Moon, keep an eye on them as they find themselves just at the tail end of the top 10. 
One lap to go here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. We're ready to send these drivers off once again. Double file, two by two down the back stretch. We like a nice organized late model stock car race on BFV Night North America. Down the back stretch one final time. We will send them off. Driver's gonna grab the hammer off turn number four. Peters and Roy, door handle to door handle, green flag in the air. Roy jumps out to that. Uh, sorry, Roy. He's, he settles in the second there. J John Peters with a clean restart, keeping that top spot. W Wally Wilson fighting his way. He's on the top side right now with Jason Ricker. Not, not where you want to find yourself as Ricker is able to get a fender on him going into one. If you look closely at this racetrack, you'll see marbles all on the top and bottom grooves. The those black chunks, you know, Davey, you see it in sports car racing. You see it with your late model efforts as well. The marbles can really, really play a factor if you get out there. Oh, Ricker. Oh, is he going to be able to save it? Rochewart's going to get the worst of it. Oh, and we've got a big one. Heavy contact. Ryan Kuhn up on his side. He rolls over the top of Jason Ricker. Caution, flag comes out here in the Rex on the Beach 100. Turn one right there was a parking lot, so we'll have to get these guys slowed down, clean up the track, and see if they can uh, settle into some green flag racing as we're getting a little bit closer to the pit window where guys might elect to try and take four and or, or take two. Checking out the replay presented by Fence Line Films. Ricker with probably the save of the year. And man, I you know, it it was a save. Sandboard getting involved as well in car number 69. It was it was a momentary save on the nine car, and then uh Ryan Kuhn trying to find the extreme outside probably takes the hardest hit out of anybody in this uh in this collision as we see keep an eye on that outside slideways slideways sliding into the wreck uh roach for taking a heavy hit as well coon up on his side yeah coon with nowhere to go and that track is blocked we see charlie sanborn around a lot of good guys taking out the track I believe some drivers are going to elect to come down pit road, check the tires for flat spots, check the toe on it as best they can. You know, you can't do a whole lot of adjusting on these. This is a fixed setup series that we are running here. But uh, right now, it's kind of a pivot point with this race. Is somebody like John Peters or Brett Roy going to be able to hold off some well adjusted cars and well-repaired cars in behind them that now have an opportunity with some fresh rubber. I, th I believe a lot of guys elected just to go with that fast repair and uh, get their cars fixed up and have their superhuman pit crew come out and uh, hang, hang, hang a new body, you know, do what needs to be done because there was a lot of carnage there in that last, that last wreck. Capital K Carnage here tonight. Rex on the Beach 100 presented by uh, the fine folks at Star Speedway in Epping, New Hampshire. We've talked them up a bunch. We've mentioned them a bunch over the past few weeks. Very much appreciate them coming on board. Uh, they'll have some racing action this week with their own late model racing, the uh, Granite State Pro Stock Series. And 350 Supers kind of be the highlight event on Saturday night. Cars continue to roll around under caution as we get the one to go signal. John Peters taking the outside, Brent Roy taking the inside. A couple of NEP iRacing drivers doing some traveling with this series, finding their way to the Myrtle Beach Speedway. Do they have enough to make something happen here tonight? It's a stout, stellar field, whatever adverb you want to use, we'll find out. Green flag in the air. We are back underway. Peters was able to get a drunk, uh, jump there on the outside. Brent Roy falls right in in second place. We got uh, Wally Wilson 
making the move to keep that third spot. To the couple and we have a record TJ Moon is around, around on the inside guy stacking up behind him. Charlie Sanborn's in it. 60 car. Caution, caution will fly here on lap 32 at Myrtle Beach. Yellow silk coming back out from the flag stand. Cars using the backwards method to get going once again, but let's see what happened here. Check it out the replay with our live Facebook look in. So we see here, it starts up ahead with TJ Moon. It looks like the 46 just drove right into the back of him. Yeah, Case, Casey Biotti, I think kind of anticipated that that one might happen. And Biotti nowhere to go. A little love tap to the door. Borges, we've seen a couple of good saves from him this season. Borges that's holds a, onto it. Th that that's another driver you can't you can't count out. Yeah, we saw last weekend the parking lot party 150, a four lap shootout to settle that event, and Borges was able to come out on top in car number 24. Biotti's able to sneak his way through. How about Saucier in the four car? Had an exciting last chance qualifier event, made his way uh, with a good save of his own into the big show, and now he finds himself up into the top six at the moment. Everybody else, though, in behind. Grout going around, Saucier going around, Rick Thompson involved. Uh, oh, heavy hit for Grout there in car number 49. And Sanborn parks it up against the wall. Ooh, that, yeah, that's drive shaft deep. I, I think that kind of hurts the ego more than the rear suspension on the Black Flag podcast. Number 69. Tell you what, it is a good night for Jazzy Builders. They will be selling front and rear clips like you wouldn't believe. Body panels as well. Uh, Going to be another hot seller here tonight. Uh, you know, if we had fines here, if the series instituted fines, you know, I'm sure a lot of drivers would have to pay up with some aggressive choices of racing that they're kind of instituting here. But, uh, you know, we do this for fun. We come out here on Tuesday nights. We do this for fun. Everybody wants to come in here and put on a big show and put on a great show for all the fans at home. So uh, that's what all about. So, Davey, it looks like we've got some previous winners in the top 10, 7th, 8th, and ninth. it looks like. And this, this seems like those, those three are going to have to work together if they want to get to the front they start battling with each other it's just going to be it's going to make it that much harder on the tires and that much harder on them to try and push forward now i don't know about you but halfway or half a lap away from the restart of this race i'm going to predict it i think we're going to see our fourth winner of this season i think i i think so and uh i don't want to jinx him but i got my money on wally yeah, Wally Wilson is going to be one to watch here, ladies and gentlemen. As you see, he works his way to the inside of Brent Roy on the start. Is Roy going to give him the room? Roy going to shut the door. The three-time Speedway 660 champion slams the door on Wilson, but that's not going to stop Wally Wilson trying to park his car on the podium here tonight, looking for more as we come up to the 40-lap mark. He is fighting hard on the inside. Has a little bit of contact coming off the of floor with that 25 car there, still side-by-side -side for third spot it seems like no one can get the real advantage while he's good getting into the corner and the 25 can keep can get that run there on the outside as Wally starts to clear him just a, just inch by inch yeah it looks like we had somebody further back really parked the fuel cell into the concrete I think they're able to keep going uh, miraculously Probably a bent rear clip on whoever that was. Thompson gets into, uh, I believe that's Trevor Krause. That's going to find him a couple of positions back. Uh, oh, it looks like that was a replay presented by Fenceline Films. So 
Uh, glad to have Tom on the ones and twos, as we call it. He was able to provide a quick replay there, saw what happened. Thompson surely going to get a talking to from race control on that one. But up front, uh, Wally Wilson has picked up O'Neill and put him down. Here comes Borges, here comes Kuhn, here comes Ryan, or uh, Casey Biotti, rather in the top 10 positions. They are knocking on the door now of the top five. Don't look now, but just sitting outside the top 10, 12 spot as we have a caution fly out. Now we're just gonna say that 69 BFP car, Char Charlie Sandmore in the third, he is making some moves to get back up to the front. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, looks like we'll keep an eye on TJ Moon. Moon, yeah, cleared himself in behind. A couple other drivers cleared themselves off one another. Um, yeah, TJ Moon has, uh, I'm going to call it, TJ Moon has been in a couple of incidents here tonight, and race control will not be thrilled about that one. The Bandolero uh, hero, as we call it, TJ Moon, having maybe a self-inflicted tough night with car number 48. Yeah, it looks like he just got fat, got into the back of him of the middle of four that turned the 28 machine around. Uh, so TJ Moon will go to the back for this next restart. And uh, he's got some, some nose damage. So we'll see if his car is still porting straight. He can work his way back up there. Uh, yeah, Jake Grout has had a forgettable night. Uh, a couple of weeks ago at the Stafford Motor Speedway, he had a solid run going. Uh, Conover as well in the 97. We've seen some up and down performances from that 97 camp. He's had a rough night here tonight, but keep an eye on a car number 69. Call it bias, call it favoritism, call it he hosts the friggin' show. We're gonna call him out when we see him. Uh, Mr. Sandboard himself, C. Sandboard, I, 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 to pull out a Spencerism, has withstood just about every challenge, every bit of the hurricane that he has withstood here tonight, and that has not been uh, anything to worry about in the 69 camp. I just love seeing that Pontiac work its way up, up inside the top 10, and we'll see if we can get a real prom promising result, or hey, maybe even fight for the win. You want to know how rare Pontiac body panels are now on late models? Uh, As no. 2003, I can't even find a template to paint them anymore. So he really has old equipment. I, I know. I know all, all too well of trying to run a Pontiac body and uh, re repairing fiberglass every week. It, uh, not the, not, not the best time, so. Off turn number four one more time. Green flag in the air. And uh, man, there's just something about Peters and Roy. They have got this field covered here tonight. Uh, it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting to see if they end up on the podium. But this could be a big show here tonight. How about car number 37, Campbell, in the unsponsored entry, trying to make something happen with the 37 and Wally Wilson in uh, car number 50 is not to be messed around with here tonight he's got a third place car at the moment does he have the winning car keep an eye in behind it's Borges and Kuhn putting on the thrill of the evening that's right that's that 72 machine and Borges down there on the bottom they are putting up a fight none of them want to give they each want the spot and they are keeping up with the top the top four in front of them so it's going to be a when, when they file in and when they move up Looks like Gorgeous will lose the spot to Kuhn. Kuhn puts himself in the, the, fifth, the fifth position. Won't, won't be long, I'm sure, until he starts uh, getting them one by one. You know, it, it's a question here today with Ryan Kuhn. Has he been picking cars off? I mean, obviously he has. He's worked from deep in the field to end up on, you know, knocking on the door of the podium at the moment. But it's another question of, is this just equal machinery? Is he giving it all he has to put the RKM Speed Shop number 72 up towards the podium? And 
you know, this could be a real challenge here tonight for the Massachusetts driver. It just shows how smart of a driver he is. Not only is he talented behind the wheel, but he has the just the brains to pick it, just, just to pick his moves. And we've seen him before come from the back, and it's not long until he's battling for the top spot. Ollie Wilson continues to work over Brent Roy. Wilson, oh, maybe a little bit of a door touch there. Seen that a couple of times this season with the 26 car and other competitors. Wilson, he is not wasting his time. He's got oh. their relative board up and he sees who's behind him and he knows that now, now is the time. If he wants the best chance he can get to win this race, he's gonna have, have to get up there. Where has Wally Wilson been this season? I'm sure he's asking himself that and the other drivers in this field may be asking themselves, uh, this guy could be a, a threat to win here tonight. He'll muscle his way around. Kuhn in the 72 to the bottom side on Brent Roy. Roy has been trying to put together a good finish this season. Was three corners away at Thompson from having a podium run ended up hard in the outside wall tonight he's not going to take any prisoners he'll make coop work for it following it behind is for brian borges for the fourth spot there's a little bit of contact coming off too he's able to save it up but he does not get that that spot from roy so he's going to try again here Borges and roy racing outside the top three spots and you know we don't want to discredit the guy up front john peters has led Every freaking lap of this race here tonight, the Rex on the Beach 100 has been locked and loaded by the driver in the 09 camp. The, uh, the second generation driver, at least second generation, Peters at the 09 wants to park it in victory lane and improve from Southern National where he ended up on the podium. over that halfway point as well. We got we got 40 to go here coming to the line. And it's gonna be a point where if there's another caution, we might see a mix up in the running order just based off who, who, who comes in for tires. Top 11 or so broken away from the rest of the field. I think, you know, uh, a Ben Dodges of the cry. The cream is really rising to the top here tonight at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Some better than others, but uh, resilience is one of the words of this race. Some of these guys have just been thrown around the doghouse and have not given up at all. Kuhn making a little bit of contact. A rare mistake from the Bay State driver. Here comes Borges in car number 24. Borges knocking on the door once again to the podium. Watley Wilson back to the fifth spot and Roy I'm sure he didn't think he'd end up back in the second spot a couple laps ago. But he definitely does not want to give it up. He put on a good battle, moved down to the bottom, got around Coon, left the door open for Borges. Borges wasn't able to fill that spot, so we'll see him try again here. 37 and a half laps left to go, and Charlie Sanborn in car number 69 picks up another position, and the steal number 25 in behind him. That's uh, O'Neill in the 25, running position number 10 at the moment, but I believe when scoring picks up here, Sanborn will have position number 10. Wilson uh, working over Ryan Borges. Borges trying the crossover move. Wilson slams the door on him, and doorknob right to the nose of the 24 car. John Peters getting a little bit of a break starting to separate from second and third. He's got about a 10, 10 car gap back to Brent Roy, who's putting up a hell of a fight from Ryan Coon, who's trying everything he can do to get around him. And hey, a good shout out as well to car number 83, the Oxford Plains Speedway driver, Adam Jocelyn. Haven't talked at all about Jocelyn tonight. He has been quiet as he is in these races. And Jocelyn putting up a good fight. The 37 of Campbell going to drop back a spot. A uh, little bit of a defensive move there from Adam Jocelyn. He'll work over Casey Biotti now. Thought we'd see a little bit more of the late model star. Casey Biotti with a win this season in BFPI late model stock car tour competition. But maybe saving his equipment 
for the final 30 or so laps of this one. And I'm sure he's, he's watching the battling that's going on on up ahead and just playing it smart and leaving a little bit of a gap this track it's wide but it's not that wide so in case something happens up in front of him he might be able to kick his way through John Peters car number 09 leading the charge so far as we come towards the lap 70 mark Brett Roy and Ryan Kuhn now making it a battle for the runner up spot in car view on Kuhn as you can see We'll play a little bit of driver analyst here for a moment. He can't quite get the advantage off the corner. Gets a whale of a drive inside the corner. But uh, off the corner, Roy just has the run. See Roy taking that little bit wider line going in the three there. That's going to help him get the run out of four. Brian Coon trying to dive it in on him. Sportsman and Pro Stock Champion in car number 26, the 96 Industries car is putting up a fight, as we mentioned, all race long. Roy has been very, very good in these races, just needs some luck in car number 26 now. Oh, there the goes the his luck. Moon. Moon got turned and wouldn't, could not get his car, car fired and was just in the way of the leaders there. And that looks like that's the end of TJ Moon's night. Yeah, if... Oh, tough, tough luck. Ooh, ooh, goodness. Hold on to your sweatpants, ladies and gentlemen. TJ Moon. Oh, here comes Brent Roy. Nowhere to go. And... Yeah, race control is going to be none too pleased with, uh, with TJ Moon there. Conover in the 97 keeps on going. Who was that in the 32 with a good save? Slid it all through the corner. We'll have one more look here. Keep an eye on the outside groove, the 32. Here comes the field for tires, too. So we have, uh, we have, some, we have some action in the pits. Head down pit side. I uh, don't believe we have a pit road analyst on our broadcast, but you know we'll, we'll we'll make the virtual jump over there and see what's happening. Top drivers making their way to their pit stalls. Is this the time to to get all of your tires, or some drivers only going to take two tires? What do you do? Oh, at this point, with just just on just over 25 laps to go, I mean you're going to need everything that you can get so it might be best bet take four but I'm sure some guys might might take two and have that gamble to keep that track position seeing uh, Ryan Kuhn and Casey Biotti as we've seen all season long maybe making the right choice here they're only taking two tires but tonight with Myrtle Beach being as aggressive as it is on tire wear that could be the wrong choice. We're gonna see how it plays out the last quarter of this one. And we're gonna give one final shout out to the folks from Star Speedway. They've come on board in a big way with the Black Flag Podcast. These BFP Night in America broadcasts cannot be possible without the great partners that we've got. They've got an event here this season, round number two on their schedule. It's the Hedges Excavating 100 for the Granite State Pro Stock Series. Uh, the Bob Weber Senior Memorial uh, for the 350 Super Modifieds. They'll run 47 laps, and it's nearly $4,000 to win. Also on uh, on tap is the Two to Go Show, Six Shooters, the KCOM Slingshots, and the Night Owl Creations Cruisers that will all be in action Saturday, 5 p.m. on May 6th. So uh, one final shout out to them. They have been huge in instrumental in making sure this podcast and these race nights go as entertaining as smooth as possible. His car is off. We're going to have John Peters up in the lead there on the inside row. Who is, oh, I'm sorry, that was Roger Saucier. We have, uh, I'm all messed up here. Yeah, Roger Saucier, um, 
had a good position there, but I believe the tires have really gone away from him. Not sure if he took tires on that, tried to stay out, tried to pull a Regan Smith at Darlington. It's not going to work for him. Peters, Roy, Coon, Biotti, and Wally Wilson, now your top five at the line. 21 laps to go. Brian Coon diving down to the inside for second spot. They are, uh, he's just, just a nose behind, but gets that edge going into three and four. They're about equal right now, coming out of four. RKM Speed Shop versus 96 Industries, side by side for the runner up spot. Roy in that top group, and you know, in the real world, Roy likes the top group. He likes running that middle group on the racetrack, tends to get good runs in pro stock competition tonight. Maybe not working out for him. Uh, he will probably have a little bit of damage from that incident with TJ Moon. Casey Biotti throws the nose to the inside. Nothing doing there. I believe Kuhn may be getting a little bit of a talk from race control, uh, maybe a warning about a lane change coming to the green flag. Drivers, no warning on that one, or no penalty on that one, rather, uh, a warning though. So he's gonna have to keep an eye on his own driving here tonight and hope that this thing stays green and he can muscle his way to the front of the field as he does so. Davey, we've got a battle for the lead. We sure do, Coon trying it on the outside. It looks like the 09 stayed out on his original starting tire, so he's not gonna have the advantage when, with Coon on with two fresh ones. So. We talk about the tire games being played here tonight. Some drivers electing to not take tires, but how impressive is it for John Peters to be holding on? And how about just in behind them, a little bit further back, Mr. Sanborn himself, C. Sanborn, I, 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 inside the top 10. He has been thrown to the wolves here tonight and wants to put on a show. He'll follow in behind Ryan Borges. Wilson gonna go around, Ricker goes around, car stack up off turn number two. And it looks like Charlie just got a little bit of that damage there, but he was able to sneak sneak through, kind of, kind of muscled his way. So we'll keep an eye on Biotti here, the replay presented by Fenceline Films. Tom, the modified guy, going to bring us through here. We'll back up a little bit here. So, yeah, the door shuts on him. Looks like Biatti just on the gas but a little bit too early causes Wade to get in the back of him and check up and get hit by the nine car. So just a little bit of misjudgment unfortunately caused some misfortune for uh, the guys there in fifth on back. It doesn't take much to move these late model stock race cars. And it really doesn't take much to cause calamity here at Myrtle Beach. It's a wide racetrack, but as you mentioned, it ain't that wide. And it, in, in the middle of the quarter like that, it only takes a little bit to uh, just to upset these cars. And from there on, you better hang on or uh, you're going to be along for the ride. So Ryan Kuhn in car number 72 trying to do a last to first challenge ends up in position number one for the moment. John Peters, we were just talking about that before the caution, Peters on old tires hanging tough with the top drivers and uh you know brett roy there as well he had a good save casey biotti obviously involved in the incident oh adam jocelyn oh man hard hits for ricker and ryan borges last week's winner sanborn with the foot to the the floorboards as it were and he is able to work his way up to position number six Green flag in the air, and we are racing. Sanborn going to get the dump. Oh, a tough break for Sanborn. He will continue on three wide a little further back. Wally Wilson, the caution flag going to come back out. A couple of cars end up stuffed into the pit wall. Jocelyn is one of them. That's a heavy hit as we check the replay here. And looking back on the replay, that initial start looked like 
Charlie tried to move down and get out of the way, he knew he had damage and uh, got, hit, got hit from behind. And fortunately, it was it was it was only him that got spun to the bottom, but I'm sure that caused a big checkup in the, in the uh, uh, midfield. I think the luck kind of fell into his lap though, because we got an immediate caution that really didn't involve him. He may be able to pick up a couple of spots. Uh, albeit at the back of this field, but he'll pick up a few more spots. And so, Wally Wilson, a restart infringement. He'll get an end of the longest line penalty. He's been fired up tonight in that uh, scoring is 50 car, but I believe it's a 69 on the side of that race car. Him, him being my pick, that's uh, that, that's real, that's real fortunate. Under ten laps to go, crazier things have happened, but I just don't believe it's going to be Wilson's night. Um, you know, would love to see him in future events. I'm sure if the space allows, he'll try to make his way back out on these Tuesday nights. Uh, some of these, some of these drivers, a little bit more tore up than they'd like to be. And I believe Sanborn may have used one of his quick repairs or his quick repair for the Rex on the Beach 100. I think he knew he had he he had, he had to save it and just ride along with whatever damage until it's time to get that come down a pit road, get that car fixed, and get back out there. And it is looking good. You know what else is looking good in this event? I think. This has been our best race that we've seen so far. Top to bottom, qualifying right through to this final eight laps or so. Sure, we've seen some chaos, but it's kind of what you expect with late model stock competition. Nothing too egregious that's happened. Um, but I think this has been our best show yet. We really love seeing that here. Oh, abs absolutely. To see these guys get a few uh like green, uh, green flag runs and race hard, kind of fall into position and see who's strong and as a driver can make their way up through the field. And right now, that that 72 machine, he is up front. Case Case Viotti on his outside. Those are two regulars that we expect to see up front coming from the back. So kind of calling it like it is at the moment. I think your winner is going to come from one of those top five positions. I don't know if anybody further back has, has the stuff, as it were, to to make something happen here. Green flag back in the air. Kuhn jumps to the outside, clears Biotti. He's only got Biotti to worry about, and everybody else has to duke it out for third on back with just a handful of laps left to go. And a clean, clean restart. We see a battle for the third spot here. Brian Borg is trying to pick a lane. Who's going to go? It's Peters and Brent Roy, position number three. And Ryan Borges there as well in the 24. He's had some really excellent runs this season. Wants to put together another one. A couple laps left to go. I believe this will be... I don't have time and squared up in front of me. Four laps to go. And there's a spin. So we have a spin. a spin on the racetrack and the caution flag is gonna come back out. All right, so let's have a look at the replay here. Can't quite see who that was. The blue and orange car, yeah. Saucier Thompson, Ricker involved, Preston DeMello, and then drives into Rick Thompson. Uh, really looked like he throttled up there to drive into him. Not sure if he was sending a message or not, but race control will not like that one. Uh, yeah, the, the RKM number 26, Preston DeMello. Uh, Brian Conover once again in a caution. I believe that's you know, four or five at this point for the 97 car. And the one in-car camera that might be worth to check out is that 69 machine on Charlie Sanborn. He looked like he just barely squeaked by that. Absolutely, we'll have a look here. Good, 
good aims from the 69 machine to Charlie. Van Horn sees the wreck happening. He sees it, sees it. Doesn't see Jesus. Away he goes. And folks, I'm going to buy myself a Charlie Sanborn t shirt at the merch hauler. I don't know about you. That moves him up inside the top 10. He restarted around 18th, maybe farther back. To get to get through that to get through that cleanly and get inside the top 10, he's in good position. Seeing as we have uh, two, one more green white checkered attempt here. Regardless of what happens here tonight, unless Sanborn is you know virtually life flighted out of this racetrack, we're gonna get a word with him. Absolutely, we're gonna bring him on up to the booth and see what happens. Just a couple laps left to go. I believe it'll be a green, white, checkered attempt to settle. The Rex on the Beach 100, all part of BFP Night in North America. The I Late Model Stock Car Tour putting on a Travis Pastrana thrill show here tonight. So it's Kuhn and Biotti side by side. That was not within the we're yeah, gonna like, green, looks like, I believe. Looks like Coon fired off real, real early on that one. And you know what? If race control, oh, and Brent Roy's gonna get turned. Hard, hard in the outside wall. Oh, um. Yeah, Ryan Coon. I mean, calling it like it is, Kuhn changed lanes there. Off turn number four, the Rex of the Beach 100 will go to Ryan Kuhn. Wait, deliberation on race control. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. He did kind of break a rule there. Casey Biotti might end up with the win in this one. On, on Unofficially right now, your winner is Ryan Kuhn, second place, Casey Biotti, third, John Peters, fourth, Ryan Borges, rounding out the top five, Joe Campbell, Adam Jocelyn with a sixth place finish tonight. Awesome job by him. He showed a lot of really good speed. Jordan uh, Thurfall, Steven Piero, a PCRL regular, and uh, Wally Wilson. Uh, yeah. You, you know, it. Biotti definitely changes lanes in behind in car number 45. And Peter, or not Peters, but Kuhn gets a real early start on it. Um, okay. We're, I think we're going to have a little bit of maybe deliberation here, but unofficially. Your now four-time winner this season, the Rex on the Beach 100, going to the Bay State driver, Ryan Kuhn. Ryan, a uh, last to first challenge, and, uh, you know, you had a late, a late race restart there to to really settle it. Um, were you worried about Casey Biotti at all? Yeah, he's always quick. I know this is one of his better tracks, so... Uh... Obviously, I knew he was going to try to throw it into the three, so I overdrove it a little bit just to kind of anticipating it. Um, I know he's going to try to get a little jump on me in the restart, so I got him there. Um, but oh, all in all, it was a good race. You know, I mean, about halfway I was on my roof, but came back and got a quick fix and came back out and was able to get back to the front. And, you know, we don't... We, we don't want this to sound like it's discrediting your efforts at all because you're obviously very accomplished in what you do, but it seems like tonight, more than other nights, you really had to work for it. The competition was really stout. Yeah, it was tough, you know. I mean, the outside lane was so good on, uh, you know, just in general. Uh, it was really tough to pass. You know, this, this was, it's really a two-groove racetrack. Um, it's just really, really tricky to pass, but I feel like once I was able to get up on the bottom um, I was able to wrap it really good and I uh, really try to drive it off straight I was able to really point it 
quicker than most guys and the top you just really got to pinch them down to get that to work uh, but you have to have a nose ahead to really really make that work but you know it's it's definitely tough uh, tricky racetrack but I'm just just glad we were able to uh, get the job done so four wins this season with the BFP ILA Metal Stock Car Tour who do you want to give thanks to here tonight with Carter 72 uh, I'd like to thank Everett's Auto Parts for the real life opportunities we're gonna go back racing here shortly I'm really excited to get back behind the wheel in real life um, Bernier's Liquors, Modern Auto Body, all my guys at RKM Setup Shop, uh, Coastal Heritage Bank, you guys in the booth, Zero One Designs, um, Black Flag Podcast, um, you know, just everyone was able to, been able to make this possible. Your winner of the Rex on the Beach 100 it goes to uh, Ryan Kuhn, car number 72. Davey, I believe we've got the rest of the podium here in the booth with us. Uh, why don't we check in with our runner-up finisher? Runner-up tonight, starting way back in the field, Kate, Casey Biotti. Casey, tell us how, uh, how it was making your way up and uh, how you avoided the carnage. Uh, it definitely took me a little bit longer than, than Kuhn. He was able to get pass a little little better from the slow guys Jeez, i can't speak tonight um no it was it was definitely probably the hardest time coming up to the field that we've that me and clune have had this season once we really hit the top 10 those guys were were definitely stout tonight um mainly once i got to the top 10 it was trying to survive and let those guys get into each other and, and unfortunately take each other out but definitely happy with, with where we came I'm sick and tired of seeing that that 72's bumper though Well, I'm sure there's always that that one more spot that you're you're chasing after, and there's there's uh, not a whole lot of guys that are uh, tougher to do that with with uh, Brian Kuhn. So, uh, awesome job tonight. Thank you. So that's Casey Biotti coming home second here tonight, third place run and leading the most laps here tonight by far. Uh, and putting on a show on old tires. Let's hear for the 09 of John Peters. John, uh, great to have you back on the podium here, as we saw at Southern National a couple of weeks ago. Where did the speed come from tonight to even have this car up front? It, it was a rocket ship. I feel like I qualified better tonight. I've been getting in a habit of qualifying 11th and starting a little bit too far back and then just taking the whole race to get up to the front. So tonight I just put myself in a better spot to start and was able to just keep it there. And obviously it helped having Kuhn and Casey there with their EOLs, but I felt like I paced it pretty well and I was saving tires to defend any late race restarts that were going to come. I just didn't anticipate <laughs> the entire field pitting behind me and having pressing tires. So that, that was not fun. Pretty <laughs> frustrating to watch everybody duck down behind you, but I figured I'd stay out and do my best at that point and finish third again. But congrats to, to Kuhn on his win. Those guys were fun to race with there. I just wish we could have gone green there in that last 30 lap run to the end. I felt like I could have been able to hold them off. And maybe if things had gone differently and everybody was on equal tires, it would have worked out better. But uh, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. So it was still fun regardless. And you had a good friend racing with you tonight. Uh, Brent Roy was really putting on a show. He was looking for uh, some luck this season and almost had it. But uh, that had to be fun to race with a close friend of yours. Yeah, Brent and I had a good time up front. We And Jason Rickard are up there for a while, too. So we were able to kind of control the front of the race. And we were able to do that for a while until things got hairy there at the end. But I appreciate Brent repping the GNG's gift colors on, on his car as well. Always have fun racing with those guys. And that's what this is all about, too, is just having something fun to do here on Tuesday nights. And we appreciate everybody who puts this on and you guys for broadcasting. So who gets the thanks here tonight with the 09 car to take away some hardware uh, for Myrtle Beach Speedway? Thanks, you guys, for doing this. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks to BFP for putting it on. Thanks to everybody who watches, my mom, and everybody who tunes in and bears with us as we somehow get to the end of these things. Thanks to my fiancé for letting me do it. And everybody who supports it and shout out to G and G's gift. Uh, I think Mr. Tim has got his first race into the season there. So excited for all that's to come there and looking forward to the next one here. Yes. We'll be back in action in one week's time. I believe it's, uh, I know Charlie's here. I believe it's Martinsville. Yeah, that it is. Yes. Yeah. Martinsville for the, uh, the, as we're dubbing it, the throat missile throwdown. So, 
We're going to have an exciting show in Virginia in one week's time. Davey, you know, any last thoughts on tonight's Rex on the Beach 100? Well, I, I think we have uh, one, one, more, one more finisher to talk about. Ah, that, absolutely. That is, that, is, that is someone that charged his way in a heat race, asserted dominance at a very early lap, and that is uh, Mr. Charlie Sanborn. Uh, hey, what's up, boys? Uh, if anything, I think we put on a show tonight. Well, I know Jesse and I were definitely keeping tabs on you, especially once we saw you just outside the top ten to fight fight your way in and then get collected. And... Uh, yeah, no, it, uh, it was an up and down day all day. Uh, definitely got aggressive in my heat race there, which put us in a transfer spot. Thank God for the first time in uh, my my entire BFB ILA Metal Stock Car Tour career. Uh, we uh, ended up taking an EOL penalty just to uh, see what we could do. Uh, drove from 30th to, I think we got up to 6th at one point. Uh, got wiped out. Started from the tail again. Drove up one more time uh, just to get junked by the 49 on the last lap there. So, um, you know, up and down day. Had a lot of fun, though. Uh, big shout out to to you guys though, Jesse, Davey. Thank you for stepping up, taking care of the broadcast portion of this. And uh, big shout out, uh, Tom, the modified guy from Fence Line Films. Uh, his broadcast abilities and everything with the entire streaming thing gets better and better each and every week. So shout out, Tom. Uh, you are the man. Fence Line Films. Anybody who hasn't yet, check him out over on YouTube and his Facebook pages with streaming services and all sorts of cool stuff there. Um, but yeah, no, just uh, thankful to make it to the end, kind of. Uh, make it in the show for for once and uh, put on a show for everybody and uh, again thank you guys for doing all this well on behalf of everybody here at the black flag podcast it's bfp night in north america coming to a close from beautiful myrtle beach south carolina for charlie sanborn for davy rando in the booth uh, my name is jesse thompson glad to have you along here with us and folks we will see you next tuesday <laughs>